It's week two. I have a bit of a confession to make. I kind of feel like filming this entire 12 week challenge was motivated by this week. Where I am supposed to, bear with me here, one second. Where I'm supposed to come up with a new income stream. So first a quick recap on where we ended off for week one. We have two banger YouTube video ideas finished. One is about how to talk on camera or like be comfortable talking on camera as an introvert, which is one that I don't think is going to do super well out of the gate but I'm hoping based on some of my research that it will be like a slow build up with time. The second is about how I had ghosted Google and ended up in Abu Dhabi. You might be thinking, how are those two things connected? Well, you're just gonna have to wait until that video drops. And then I have come up with two other videos that are some more influencer economy commentary videos that I think are like just controversial enough to get a lot of clicks. Those two aren't scripted out yet, but I at least have a bit of a framework. So we're moving on to this week. I sat down and thought, what on earth could be another income stream that I could tap into? Right now, my income streams are divided primarily into brand deals, commercials. I have a little bit of AdSense revenue from both YouTube and my blog. I have a little bit of affiliate income. I do sell a digital product, which is a Pinterest starter guide, but I might've messed up there by making it a freebie attached to one of my biggest YouTube videos. I put a code at the bottom to get it for free. And while that got me an incredible amount of email signups, it kind of killed it from the sales perspective. And then I also do one-on-one -on -one calls very, very, very selectively. So that was what? Is that six? Maybe lost a finger, but I have six income streams, but they're not all super well developed and robust. And so I wrote down a list of some potential new income avenues. And I would love to hear from you if any of these resonate with you, if any of these are something like, yes, I would want that. And I'm gonna read them out and then tell you what I ultimately chose to focus on for this week. So first I have a monetized Pinterest guide. I was thinking because I basically made my Pinterest starter guide free that I could keep that for free and then make a new digital product to sell, which would be a guide for how to monetize Pinterest. And I feel like that's kind of a, a good one to sell because it's something that somebody could potentially make a profit from in purchasing it. I have Notion templates. I have been obsessively using Notion for a couple years now, and it's the only thing that has ever worked for my chaotic brain. And so I've been thinking like, okay, I could do a bundle or sell some individual templates of like how I track my brand deals, how I plan out my YouTube videos, how I track my affiliate links, like maybe just an entire bundle that would be helpful for creators. I wrote that I could explore doing workshops, webinars, or like group calls or a virtual event or something. I feel like that could be really fun, but I think that's like a much bigger project than something I could whip up in a week. Um, a paid community, something like using maybe Uscreen or YouTube memberships, just like a really transparent, helpful corner of the internet, maybe with like some exclusive content. I have create a new YouTube channel, which is something that I actually, um did, but it would not become a new income stream anytime soon. As I've talked about, it took me two years to monetize this channel. So like, that's another like long-term strategy. I wrote that I could come up with some type of purpose planning template or journal because something that comes up on a lot of the one-on-one -on -one calls I do is that people want to be creators and they have all these things they're passionate about, but they can't like dial it into a purpose. They can't figure out who they're speaking to, who they want to serve. So I think it would be really cool to create something that helps guide people through that. I love journals and day planners. So like, it would be so cool to create like something physical, but maybe the short term is like some type of digital template for people. And then finally, boop, boop. Oh, that's such a, I stained it. Merch. That's so upsetting. This week, we're going to be working on tasks to create my Brand new income stream, which will be a merch. Oh, <laughs> a merch line. Oh, it's the worst. It's just, it's spilling. Someone remind me never to fill my tea this high. So while these other ideas are definitely pretty strong contenders, I became very obsessed lately with the idea of selling like some low key sweatshirts. 
And I hope this isn't cheating for the challenge because I did technically start it a couple weeks ago. But this is the week I'm going to really drill down everything and get it ready to launch. So I am obsessed with crew neck sweaters. And the thought started to come to me that like, I wanted to wear something in my videos that wasn't always branded. Like if you've noticed some of the other ones I've worn, it has artwork on it that like is tied to Adobe Express or I have one that is my like Quaker Oats oatmeal sweater. I just have all of these crew neck sweaters that advertise somebody else. And I just started thinking how cool it would be in these like talking head videos to have something that represented me and my brand. And I went down the rabbit hole of looking at different print on demand sites, different fulfillers and everything. And I eventually came across Fourth Wall, which is one of YouTube's like official partners that can like integrate for the little storefront that lives at the bottom of your YouTube video. And I also found out that Fourth Wall is what MKBHD uses. So I was like, okay, like, this, this sounds pretty legit. And we started designing some things. And this is one of them. This is a sample. And I'm actually not happy where this is. We are going to move this probably like an inch up. It has gone through the wash and I, I did stain it. That was my bad. I stain everything. I think I was making chicken and the olive oil splashed on me. That's why I'm not meant to be in a kitchen. So yes, this is sample number one, just a basic crew neck that's like cozy, a little bit rough and vintagey feeling on the outside. It is embroidered. So I feel like it just makes it feel a little bit more elevated. This piece of merch I think is more applicable to people who've been with me for a really long time or who follow me on my main brand, which is Comfy Girl with Curls. And it's kind of like a three in one pun or like reference. So Comfy Crew, to me means that you are somebody who just likes to be comfy. You're part of the comfy crew, not in a way that ties to me and my brand, but just like you like to be a comfortable person and you are declaring that proudly with your chest. Level two is of course the nod to my origins, comfy girl with curls. I feel like, yeah, self-evident. The third, which is my favorite, is that because this is a crew neck sweater, this is literally a comfy crew. You get it? No? So I'm only probably going to be selling items with this text on it that's either a crew neck t-shirt or a crew neck sweater. You won't have a hoodie, for example, that says comfy crew on it because then you don't get the fun pun. Then I got this baby, which now that I got the sample, I'm not sure if I'm gonna sell. I don't know, this might just be for me. So this says comfy and creative on it. And again, in homage to my two brands, Comfy Girl Curls and Creating with Kea. Mm. This is why we order samples. Oh no. Okay. Well, I just actually washed both of these to test how they would hold up in the wash. And obviously that threading came undone a little bit. That's so sad. Okay, that's why we're here. This one was one that I really envisioned me wearing in my videos. I'm not sure if it's something that somebody else would be super interested in buying unless you too feel like you are a comfy and creative person. So maybe, maybe there is a wider appeal, but I really was inspired by this sweater that I literally live in, which was from Stan. And it says become the brand and it's embroidered over the chest. This too, I think I, did it a little low. I was thinking like one finger higher. It does look like the stitching took a little bit of a beating in the wash. I think that might be happening because the font is a little bit too small. I could try this again with a bold font. I'm just so that it's like more, I don't know, thread. I do also have like a little Easter egg here because at the end of all my videos, I like wave like this and say until next time. And so I did a like little until next time. But looking at the sample, I do think if I do it again, I'll take out the wave and just have the text until next time and make it a little bit bolder so it's more legible and similarly maybe less likely to unravel. Yeah, but I do actually really really like this one, but I really do think this is one that I'm like, truly I wanted a shirt that reflected me and that I can wear all the time and this is it. 
So before I talk through like my next steps and like the actual tasks I'm gonna do to get this thing ready, I do wanna talk about just some of the journey of trying to create merch. So with Fourth Wall, it's actually really cool. They fulfill almost all their stuff through Printful. They've got everything, hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, bikinis, blankets and coffee cups and tumblers. It's a free platform to use and they basically just charge an administration fee when somebody orders your product and they subtract like the cost of manufacturing the product and then you keep the remaining balance. And this is where I'm getting like already a little bit stuck. I think I was kind of shocked by how much, you know, these base sweatshirts cost. This one was a little bit cheaper, but you're limited because you're only able to put what you want on the front. You can't put anything on the back or on the sleeve. The fabric itself is a little bit cheaper. It is a 50% cotton, 50% polyester blend. Like I said, it's a little bit rougher. This one feels extremely plush, but the base product itself is more expensive and you can't put anything nice and big on the center. You can only do small left, small center, or small right. And you can do, oops, something printed on the back. But also something really interesting is each placement is like an extra amount of money. So you would be either charging people more or like making less of a cut. And this one also doesn't come in like any fun colors. It's just black, navy, and I think like a bunch of different heathered grays. And because I'm Canadian, I've been really kind of trying to figure out what is the sweet spot to charge for like a sweatshirt. Making sure I'm not gouging people, but also making sure I'm making like a little bit of a profit margin. And noting that the baseline for these prices is in USD. So Canadians always get the short end of the stick. So if I set something to like $35 or $40 US, that doesn't sound too crazy. But now you're looking at like a $60 sweatshirt Canadian. And it's like, and at that point you're like reducing the amount of people who might think this is worth it. So like this one, if I priced it at $34, I would make like $5. And I'm not anticipating selling like thousands of these. This is something more like, again, for like deep community. So like a $5 profit margin sounds like really low to me, but also I don't wanna go too crazy. It's enabled me to look at other people's shops now through a new lens now that I know what like the baseline of all of these different products cost. Like some of them I'm like, you guys are charging $80 for this. And I know that sweater is only 20 bucks. You're making like a $60 profit, like wild. But then again, some of these sweatshirts are super expensive. Like actually one second. And you have ones like this, which is from the independent trading company. And these are like a very fun vintage wash sweatshirt. And they have so many really fun colors, but the base line of this is like $40 US. And then you like, if you want to put your graphic on the front and like maybe something on the back, that's like an extra graphic. So now it's like $45. So to even make like $5 off of this, you would have to price it at 55 USD. So ugh, we are learning that these sweatshirts are not all built the same. They range in price, they range in where you can place the designs, they range in colors. They also range in like which ones allow for embroidery and which ones are only just like, you know, a printed on image. I'm, I'm just learning a lot. I'm learning a lot and trying to figure out what is best for like me and this brand. I had also pulled, pulled you guys because the whole point I was doing this is so that I could have like sweatshirts that I like to wear in my videos. But I would kind of ask the audience, like, do you guys like sweatshirts? hoodies, t-shirts, like something kind of cute and cropped. And the poll actually tied with sweatshirts and hoodies. And so I'm gonna order a couple samples of hoodies that say something completely different because what I'm actually hoping to do here is to create like a line of items that are great for content creators to just wear in their stuff. With the exception of like this one, I don't want things to be super branded to me. So I'm thinking I'll have like a line of comfy things. So it'll be a comfy crew. I'm looking at some of like the blankets and like the cozy stuff, which will appeal to my like comfy girl curls lifestyle audience. I have this one maybe. And then the rest is going to be items 
that are specifically for content creators with different sayings, some different graphics. I'm actually looking at employing an artist for some just like really fun stuff to put on. That's my overall goal for this eventual income stream. But for now, I think I'm just gonna launch with like two to three products most. So my next steps, finish my designs and order new samples. And step two is to finish the website that these are going to live on. And if I'm lucky enough, lucky enough to get these samples before the end of the week, which I'm not too sure last time it took like a week and two days, then I'll take some pictures in it, pop it on the website and go live. Boom, new income stream. Let's see how it goes. I am so excited because four out of my five samples came in ridiculously fast. So I ordered them midday Monday and they arrived on Friday, which is crazy. And I am actually so incredibly pleased with how they turned out. Let me show you real quick. First, the comfy, ooh, don't fall on the floor with all the cat hair. Try not to get makeup on it. Okay, this is so much better. I ended up making the comfy crew bigger than it was before and higher on the chest. And I'm just, I'm so happy. This is exactly how I envisioned it. It's super comfy. I love the color. I ended up grabbing a sample. Oh, everything's falling over. I also got a sample in this color blue. I don't know what we're calling this blue. And same place, the stitching looks fantastic. I'm going to be selling this, I've decided for now in three colors, one, two, and a navy. And I feel like everybody knows what navy looks like. So to save myself a little bit of money for now, I'm only gonna be photographing myself in these two and the navy will be a mock-up but I will eventually order it and take some nice photos as well. Then we've got the updated Comfy and Creative. We made it bolder and raised it up and I'm so incredibly happy with how this turned out. Like this is exactly how I envisioned it. I can do a talking head video and like you can still see it, very happy. And I have the until next time on the arm and it's a little bit bigger than it was before. So it's a bit more legible, but it's still just like a little Easter egg for anybody who's in the know. Very happy. And finally, this reminder to creators that, focus, posted is better than perfect. And this is embroidered and it's kind of like the posted is kind of rugged showing that it's not, you know, perfect, but it's okay because it's better than having all your content sitting in your drafts. This turned out honestly so well. I'm really happy with it. The hoodie is so comfortable. I'm going to be selling this one in both this color and a burgundy. And yeah, I think it's just like a great reminder for us creators. The fifth one I ordered is actually a hoodie in a different material because I wasn't sure if I would like the fit of this hoodie, but this other hoodie doesn't allow for embroidery. So to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing while being like printed and still feeling a bit more like elevated, it says this repeated three times just to like remind everybody. And the thing is that one I found out after I ordered it that it is not able to be fulfilled in Canada. And so anybody who would maybe be ordering more than one thing would be paying shipping twice as I paid shipping twice. So all of these came in one package and I think the shipping was about, I'd have to look it up. I think it was maybe like 12 bucks, to, but then I paid like another 12 bucks for the one that's still to come and it's taking a lot longer. So I'm thinking, especially because this turned out so well that that other one, I just might not even put up for sale because I would just like all of my stuff to be able to be fulfilled from one place and then hopefully have like a higher chance of people just paying shipping once on their orders and getting everything all in one fell swoop. So we'll see, maybe it'll come in and I'll fall in love with it and maybe I'll share it and you guys will love the design. But as of right now, I think I'm just gonna be launching with like these three different styles. My website where these are gonna be hosted is actually kmarriott.com, which is hosted on fourth wall to fulfill everything. And the website's done. I'm pretty happy with it. It's also gonna be used as a landing page for anybody who just like Googles my name. And at the very top, it will direct people to both my blogs. It will explain a little bit more about me and my journey. And then at the bottom and the top, there'll be places where people can go to the shop itself. That's done. The only thing missing is some like photos of me actually in these outfits instead of just the mock-ups. So I'm gonna do that. Hopefully it turns out well, and then I'm gonna hit launch. That's, that's the plan. Let's go.
Okay, so my photo shoot is complete. I edited all my photos, uploaded them, and everything's live, but I haven't like posted anything about it. So originally, this video was going to be like my debut, like surprise, I have merch, but I'm not posting this video until like next week. But now that everything's ready, I'm like itching to just post about it. So I think I might post on Instagram some of my photos being like, yo, surprise, here's merch. But I feel like I should launch it a little bit more strategically than that versus just being really impulsive and posting. So we'll see what I decide. But either way, by the time this video is up, you should see unless you've noticed already that at the bottom of my video, my merch should be there. And it's exciting to know that that's just always gonna be there now for any of my videos. So if something blows up, that's just extra visibility on my merch without me having to kind of like promote it on an ongoing basis. So if you are interested in being part of the comfy crew, if you need a reminder that your content is better posted than remaining perfect in the drafts, or you know, if you like that comfy and creative merch, then go check it out. I'm really excited about it. I think it'd be really cool to like eventually have other creators out there, or other people out there wearing like one of these, even if it's just one other person. So if you order it, take a picture and send it to me. I would just be so touched that you would be interested enough to support. So there's that. And yeah, final thoughts for anybody who's thinking about launching another income stream. Merch is a much easier stream than I thought it would be, at least easier to create. Who knows about the actual return on investment or that time I've spent. We'll see if it actually generates any revenue, but in my head, it was just this huge barrier to get started with it. I thought you needed to have Shopify, you need to have all these different things, but fourth wall makes it super, super easy. They do also provide like referral codes for people, just for anybody who uses their service. It's not like a partnership or anything. So I will drop mine below because I think if you sign up with it and make three sales, we each get $10, I think in like sample credit or something, which is kind of cool. Cause then I can order more samples without feeling like I'm breaking the bank. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm happy to have something that I can finally wear in my videos. That's me. That was the original goal of this. So, you know, it's a win regardless. When week three is up, you can catch it right over here. We'll see if I end up doing a dedicated week for week three because I'm supposed to be learning a new skill set. And I don't know if that's going to be enough to fill an entire video. So we might end up seeing week three and four combined. I don't know. You're just going to have to click here when the time comes to find out. Thanks for watching and until next time.